एवरीवन आई वेलकम यू ऑल टू माय चैनल आई एम शेल एंड टुडे वी विल सी द स्ट्रक्चर ऑफ डीएनए बेसिक्स पार्ट टू टुडे वी विल सी व्हाट आर नाइट्रोजेनियस बेसिस देयर स्ट्रक्चर देन ट्रिक्स टू रिमेंबर देयर स्ट्रक्चर देन वी विल सी द कॉन्सेप्ट ऑफ न्यूक्लियोटाइड्स एंड न्यूक्लियोसाइड्स एंड वी विल ऑल्सो सी द डिफरेंस बिटवीन एन एम पी एन डी पी एन टी पी डी एन एम पी डी एन डी पी डी एन टी पी वॉट आर दीज थिंग्स now let's talk about the third component of a nucleotide that is n that is nitrogenous bases we have used the for, uh, terms snp for a nucleotide so n stands for nitrogenous bases or nucleo bases these are aromatic heterocyclic flat rings with carbon and nitrogen these are aromatic compounds and normally an aromatic compound contains carbon atoms in its main ring but nitrogenous bases they have other atoms also that is they can have nitrogen also along with carbon so they are called as heterocyclic rings normally heterocyclic ring means other atoms like nitrogen phosphorus or sulfur can be also present in the ring form that is let's suppose benzene is having only carbon atoms in its ring form but in in place of carbon let's suppose over here nitrogen is present or over here phosphorus is present or sulfur is present then that ring will be called as heterocyclic so nitrogenous bases are heterocyclic rings but they have nitrogen only along with carbon also in the ring form and these are aromatic and these are basic in nature therefore they are called as nitrogenous bases and their basic character is due to lone pair of electrons on nitrogen atoms that is they act as bases in chemical reactions now the nitrogenous bases found in dna and rna so they are also called as nucleo bases so the nitrogenous bases which are found in dna and rna belong to two classes that is they are of two types purines and pyrimidines purines are the group of aromatic compounds which have a basic structure like this they have a basic structure like this that is they are double ringed compounds and the purines are adenine and guanine so adenine and guanine they have a basic structure similar to purine but this structure is somewhat modified in both the cases so they are come under purines now the other class of bases is pyrimidines under pyrimidine there are three members that is cytosine uracil and thiamine and pyrimidines they have a basic structure like this that is they are single ring compound and cytosine uracil and thiamine uh, they have a basic structure like this and it is somewhat modified in these three so they come under pyrimidines so the dna and rna in this world they have four types of nitrogenous bases dna has atcg that is adenine thymine cytosine and guanine and rna has adenine uracil guanine and cytosine and guanine now let's look at the structures of these nitrogenous bases i will also tell you the tricks which you can follow in order to remember the structures because in some time sometimes in exams their structures are also asked so this is the basic structure of purine it is modified somewhat to form adenine and guanine so this is the basic structure double ring over here also we are having double ring but they are somewhat modified the first trick is the word purine is a small word so it is having only two members adenine and guanine you can also use the formula pag the word pyrimidine is a bigger word so it is having three members p c u t cytosine uracil and thymine next the word purine is small members are small but their structure have two rings the word pyrimidine is big the members are big but their structure is of a single ring the main structure is single ring which is modified to form cytosine uracil and thymine now uh the numbers of the carbon atoms or the atoms present in the main ring they are simply given 1 2 3 4 but in case of sugar it is 1 prime 2 prime 3 prime to in order to differentiate which i have already told now the numbering of these atoms is important in case of purines the numbering takes place from this corner and it is anti clockwise for this chain and clockwise for this chain similarly over here also the number 1 is given to this atom and it is anti clockwise and over here clockwise just remember this thing so you can know the numbering pattern now uh, 
the main main atoms of the ring are always carbon atoms but in some places nitrogen is also present so they are called as heterocyclic in case of purines that is adenine and guanine nitrogen atom is present at both 1 and 3 position so in adenine it is present at 1 and 3 and other places are occupied by carbon in this chain and in this chain or in this ring seventh and ninth position is occupied by nitrogen and the other places are occupied by carbon so you can remember this one 1 and 3 nitrogen 7 and 9 nitrogen for both the rings over here also 1 and 3 nitrogen 7 and 9 nitrogen so this formula you can remember 13n 79n then next thing in case of adenine and in case of guanine sixth position is modified somewhat the sixth position is having cnh2 in case of adenine and o in case of guanine and in case of guanine one more modification is that carbon number 2 is having nh2 so if you remember these things and remember the way in which the, they are numbered then you can remember the structure of adenine and guanine easily now one more thing in case of purines when they are attached with sugar you all know in case of sugar carbon number 1 of sugar is involved in formation of glycosidic bond that is one prime is involved in case of glycosidic bond in case of these nitrogenous bases that is in case of adenine and guanine which atom is involved in the formation of glycosidic bond you have to remember that in case of adenine and guanine n9 n9 is involved in the formation of glycosidic bond n9 that is this one and this one is involved in the formation of glycosidic bond how to remember this thing in case of purines n9 is involved and in case of pyrimidines that is cut n1 is involved so in case of purine the word is small members are small but they are double ring and their higher number atom is involved in case of pyrimidine word is bigger members are big mem mem members are more and their structure is having single ring but their lower numbered nitrogen is involved in glycosidic bond in this way you can remember one thing i forgot to mention is you have to also remember the positions of double bonds in case of adenine and guanine the positions of double bonds is same that is between 1 and 6 5 and 4 2 and 3 7 and 8 in both the cases now let's look at the structure of pyrimidines that is cytosine uracil and thymine this is the basic structure of pyrimidine it is single uh, ring structure so it is slightly modified in case of cytosine uracil and thymine let's look at these structures uh, in both in in these three cases similar to purines at first and third position nitrogen is present instead of carbon see over here 1 and 3 nitrogen 1 and 3 nitrogen and here also 1 and 3 nitrogen so this thing you can remember the second thing to be remembered is in all the three cases at second position oxygen is present and one more thing in case of pyrimidines the process of numbering the atoms is different from that of purines over here the first number is given to this nitrogen the base base nitrogen and it is followed Uh, in anti clockwise direction 1 2 3 4 5 6 so you have to remember this one then uh, 1 and 3 nitrogen and second position oxygen in all the three cases uh, remember in case of purines the number the atom which was present over here it was sixth and we had something special with that atom here also the atom which is present over here although is it is numbered as four but it is special in case of cytosine we have 4 nh2 uh, nh2 at fourth position in case of thymine and uracil we have oxygen at fourth position actually thymine and uracil are exactly similar in structure except one thing that that difference is in case of thymine at fifth position we have one ch3 that is we have one methyl group but in case of uracil there is no methyl group this difference is only there between these two structures so you have to remember first and third position nitrogen then how to number uh, the atoms then where all double bonds are present in case of cytosine 5 6 and 4 3 double bonds and in case of thymine and uracil in between fifth and sixth position there is double bond so you have to remember the pattern of numbering then the positions of double bond then first and third position nitrogen is present in all three then second position oxygen is present in all three and speciality is with fourth position 4 nh2 4 o and here also 4 o the only difference between thymine and uracil is Uh, we have methyl at fifth position so 
In this way, if you will try to remember the structures of purine and pyrimidine, it would be easier. One more thing you have to see is whether the valency of nitrogen and carbon are satisfied or not. It is very easy. See, over here carbon has satisfied all its valency 1, 2, 3, 4. So, no H is present. Over here nitrogen has satisfied all the three valencies 1, 2, 3. So, no H is present. But over here the carbon has only 1, 2, 3 bonds formed. So, it will have one H with it. In this way, if you will try to see, you will be able to draw all the structures. In between adenine and thymine, two hydrogen bonds will be formed and they will be formed in between N1 of adenine and N3 of thymine and NH2 at 6th position of adenine that is NH2 will, is attached at 6th position carbon of adenine and oxygen at 4th position of thymine. Let's look at their positions. Uh, these are the nitrogen atoms which are in, involved in the formation of glycosidic bond. This forms glycosidic bond with N1 of sugar and this forms glycosidic bond when it is attached with sugar. So, let's ignore these nitrogen atoms. So, the rest ones are the first hydrogen bond is formed in between NH2 at 6th position and oxygen at 4th position. So, this is our first hydrogen bond. The second one is formed in between N1 and N3. This H and this N1. Second hydrogen bond will be formed. The hydrogen bonds cannot be formed at other places. That is the uh, hydrogen bond can only be formed in between H and N or O or F. So, H is compulsory. It will be only formed with H or N. H or O, H or F. So, yeah, we have to search for H as one component and any one of these three components. And in nitrogenous basis, F is not present. That is, fluorine is not present. Only, only O and N are present. So, at only two positions, two hydrogen bonds can be formed. And this leads to the stability of ad adenine and thymine base pair. Next, in between G and C, Three hydrogen bonds are formed and they are formed in between carbon number 2 NH2 and carbon number 2 O then N1 of guanine and N3 of cytosine and uh, O of carbon number 6 and H of uh, NH2 at carbon number 4. So you have to remember these things that is N1 of adenine and H of N3 of thymine and NH2 at 6th position carbon of adenine and O at 4th position carbon of thymine. So, two hydrogen bonds are formed in between these two places. Similarly, in case of guanine and cytosine, you have to remember the hydrogen bonds are formed between O at 6th position of guanine and H at NH2 of C4, then H at N1 and N3 then H at NH2 of C2 and O at C2 of cytosine. Now, these nitrogenous bases, if they are forming glycosidic bond with sugar molecules, then that compound is called as a nucleoside. So, whenever the nitrogenous bases form bonds with sugar molecule, their name changes. When a nitrogenous base is alone, it is, let's suppose it is called as adenine. When this adenine forms glycosidic bond with sugar, in case of DNA, deoxyribose sugar and in case of RNA, ribose sugar, then the name of adenine will be changed. That adenine will be called as now adenosine. So, if you come across this word adenosine, you have to be sure that this adenine molecule has formed glycosidic bond with sugar molecule. So, we use the word adenosine, guanosine, cytidine, uridine and thymidine. See, for purine and pyrimidine, we use the surname sine. And for pyrimidines, cytosine, uracil and thymine, we use the surname dyne. So, adenosine means the nitrogenous base adenine is now formed glycosidic bond with the sugar molecule deoxyribose in case of DNA and ribose in case of RNA. So, these terms and these terms you should not be confused with. Now, when a sugar molecule combines with the nitrogenous base and a phosphate molecule also joins with them, then we get a triplet or we get a uh, three molecule compound and these three molecule compound is called as a nucleotide. Now, let's look into these few terms. The first term is nucleoside monophosphate. Nucleoside means SN. Monophosphate means single phosphate is present. 
so nucleoside monophosphate is our nucleotide so a nucleotide can be called as nucleoside monophosphate if it is having a single phosphate snp that is sugar is there one nitrogenous base is there and one phosphate is there so this is our snp and this is nucleoside monophosphate or this is a nucleotide having one phosphate similarly the second term is nucleoside diphosphate it means nucleoside means sn and diphosphate means p so a nucleotide can be called as nucleoside diphosphate it is if it is having two phosphate molecules that is it will look like this sugar nitrogenous base one phosphate another phosphate then the next term is nucleoside triphosphate which means nucleoside means sn triphosphate means ppp so a nucleotide can be called as nucleoside triphosphate if it is having three phosphate molecules we need to understand these terms properly in order to understand replication because replication is the polymerization of dna that is formation of dna by linking of monomers snp so this snp are linked together but in our cell we are not having nucleoside monophosphates in our cell we are having nucleoside triphosphates we have nucleoside triphosphates so in order to form dna we need snp that is we need either nucleotide or you can say nucleoside monophosphate any term you can use but in our cell we have nucleoside triphosphates these nucleoside triphosphates that is sugar nitrogenous base and three phosphate molecules are converted into sugar nitrogenous base and single phosphate these two phosphate molecules are broken or removed from this molecule and during this removal energy is obtained and this snp are converted into the are, are attached and formed dna now again this snp will attack on one more nucleoside triphosphate and will convert in, it into nucleoside monophosphate that it, it is it will break these two phosphate molecules and will remove and it will add along with this one more snp in this way polymerization will take place which i have talked about in my replication concepts video so this so this statement is very important that is a nucleotide is termed as nmp that is nucleoside monophosphate ndp nucleoside diphosphate or ntp nucleoside triphosphate depending on the number of phosphates attached and as in dna the sugars uh, at two prime carbon have only h and h so we can call them as deoxyribonucleoside monophosphate deoxyribonucleoside diphosphate and deoxyribonucleoside triphosphate so we can write dnmp dndp and dntp deoxyribonucleoside triphosphate so deoxyribonucleoside triphosphates are our raw materials which are converted into dnmp and added with one another to form a long dna molecule with this we come to the end of this video in our next lecture we will talk about phosphodiester bond and glycosidic bond thank you for watching